Hello everyone, in this video we will cover the section 13.3. In this section we will define the length of a curve, but we will not cover the last part of this section, which is the curvature of the curves in three-dimensional coordinate system. When we have a when we have time at the end of the course, also I can uh, uh, tell you uh, what means uh, the curvature or and uh, not what means the curvature of a curve in three-dimensional coordinate system, and also you can find uh, in other vectors at a point on the curve which are called uh, normal and binormal vectors, uh, except the tangent vector by collecting them tangent normal and binormal vector we construct a frame for a curve in three dimensional coordinate system like the vectors i j and k but here just we will see the length of a curve in three dimensional coordinate system so we suppose that the curve has the vector equation, you know, the curve can be defined by a vector equation or by a closed form. Uh, from A to B, uh, T is an element of the open interval from A to B, you know, uh, vector functions are defined from the interval, which is a subset of real numbers. Uh, where f, g, and h are continuous uh, component functions. So if the curve is traversed exactly once as t increases from a to b, that uh, its length can be found uh, by using the formula uh, written here, or this one is the real representation for the length of uh, the curve from A to B actually we find the length directly of the curve from the point corresponding to T is equal to A to the point P from the point P to the point Q the point P has the components actually uh, F of A uh, G of A and age of a similarly you can write the components of the point q using the vector equation uh, from t to t is equal to b so we find the length of the curve this one directly just by taking the integral from a to b of the length of the tangent vector uh, for the curve in three-dimensional coordinate system. So how can we find the length of this curve? Why is it equal to the integral from A to B of the length of the tangent vector? So you can see the proof of this formula in the uh, textbook. Actually we use the similar way to you know to find the area of a function in two dimensional the area of under the function in two dimensional coordinate system if you remember from a to b in here we use the rectangles to find the area uh, under the curve y is equal to f of x in two dimensional coordinate system if remember we find um, a Riemann sum from the uh, left from the uh, left side and right side, and similarly in here we use uh, the line segments to approach the length of the curve from the point P uh, to the point Q. We use a line segment uh, from up and from the bottom and taking the limit of the addition of the lengths of these line segments uh, okay like this one we obtain this formula you can see this proof in the textbook for example find the length of the arc of the circular hex with vector equation given here from the point 1 0 0 to the point 1 0 uh, 2 pi from the point P to the point Q 
So according to the formula written here, the derivative of R uh, can be obtained by taking the derivative of the component functions minus sine, cosine and 1, you see. And the length of this uh, tangent vector uh, for the helix in the example is obtained by taking the square of the component functions and adding them in the square root. So we have minus sine square cosine square plus 1 which is equal to square root of 2. For all t, we have a constant for its length. Actually, we can have also, we may have a function of t, like t squared or sine t, according to the given uh, component functions. But for this example, we have a constant function, actually, in terms of t. So the arc from the point uh, 1, 0, 0, 2, the point 1, 0, 2 pi is described by the parameter interval from 0 to 2 pi uh, because we move along the helix once in the positive side. Uh, from this formula, we obtain from 0 to 2 pi and also uh, this parameter interval can be obtained according to the given points. You see we have 1, 0 for the first two components for, but for the last component which is corresponding to t in the vector function it is changing uh, between 0 and uh, 2 pi. Therefore the parameter interval will be from 0 to 2 pi. So we write uh, this endpoints for the limit points of the integral and we know the length is equal to the square root of 2 for the tangent vector and uh, finding the result we obtain namely finding the integral we obtain the integral square root of 2 times t from 0 to 2 pi writing the limit points we obtain the length of this helix from 1 0 0 to the point 1 0 2 pi so a single curve can be represented by more than one vector function uh, for example we have a special curve defined the vector defined by the vector function r1 whose component functions are t t squared t cube between 1 and 2 for the parameter t so by changing the parameter, by changing the variable of the parameter by using some elementary functions like uh, exponential x. So for c we write e to the power u. So the second component becomes e to the power 2u. Uh, the last one becomes e to the power 3u. And writing e to the power u for t and taking the uh, natural logarithm of every side of this inequality ln1 becomes 0 ln e to the power uh, u from here actually we have 1 e to the power u 2 by taking natural logarithm uh, for every number written here we get ln1 is equal to 0 ln e to the power u becomes u and we have ln2 okay this is the new parameter representation for this curve by changing the variable of the uh, independent uh, representation for the component functions. Therefore, the parameterization of a curve is not unique like these ones. We have two uh, uh, representations for a single curve here by changing the independent variable uh, concept. However, the arc length is independent of the parameterization that is used. Namely, both parameterization give the same answer for the length of a curve. Uh, using one of them, you can find the length of a curve. We get the same result for both parameterizations because the length of a curve cannot be changed 
according to the parametrization since it is a number okay the parametrization the representation of the curve is not important for the uh, length of a curve since we have the same number for its length so here we will define the arc length function generally by using this function we find directly the length of the curve so a curve is given by the vector function defined here from a to b and you know its derivative is continuous and it states its tangent vector uh, and we uh, suppose that uh, the curve is traversed exactly once we move along the curve once like this one according to the positive side uh, as t increases from a to b okay so the arc length function uh, written by s is defined by s of t which is actually uh, uh, the integral from a point to a general point uh, of the length of the uh, tangent vector and it is given by explicitly by using the definition of the length in this form so it will be a function of the variable t since the upper limit is a parameter is uh, the independent variable of the function given here therefore s of t is a function of t which is the length of the uh, curve between uh, some initial point to every point on the curve for in three dimensional coordinate system you see s of t represents actually the length of the curve from here to any point can be also from here to the initial point okay this is another value for the uh, arc length function s of t by changing the value of t you can obtain uh, the length of the curve from the initial point to the desired point so from here if we differentiate both sides of this equation we get the derivative of s you see according to the uh, theorem uh, the fundamental theorem of calculus if you remember which is the first part according to the first part of the fundamental theorem of calculus uh, the derivative of the second one will be just the function which is the integrant function uh, namely the length of the tangent vector of the curve written here according to the fundamental theorem of calculus part one so it is often useful to parameterize, parameterize a curve with respect to arc length which means when we parameterize a curve uh, with respect to arc length so the length of the tangent vector will be always one namely will be a unit vector because arc length arises naturally from the shape of the curve and does not depend on a particle coordinate uh, system so to simplify our calculations for finding basic properties of a curve in three dimensional coordinate system we use the arc length parametrization which means uh, the length of the tangent vector will be always one which means uh, we will have always a unit vector by taking directly the derivative of the vector function of the curve just uh, there will be always one so reparameterize for example parameterize the helix written here uh, with respect to the arc length measured from 1 0 0 in the direction of increasing t you will find the arc length function the initial point is 1 0 0 correspond to the parameter value t is equal to 0 from the last component 
zero is corresponding to C. Uh, from example one we have uh, the length of generally vector tangent vector is equal to square of two. The S over T dt is corresponding to square of two from here. So writing this one in the formula to find directly uh, the function s of t so the integral becomes square of 2 times t here therefore uh, by eliminating t from here we have s over square of 2 so the required parameterization is obtained by writing s over square of t for t here and we obtain a new parameterization for the helix and if you compute uh, the derivative of this new parameterization and uh, taking its length you will see the length will be equal to 1 the length will be equal to 1 you know cosine square plus sine square is equal to 1 from here we will have 1 over square of 2 its square is 1 over 2 here we have square of 2 and we will get 1 for the length of tangent vector thank you